Ireland, we are back. Welcome, you are watching Follow We Will Legends podcast this Thursday evening with Stan Gordon and myself, Lindsay Glenn. Our podcast features the greatest ever Rangers legends, Rangers supporters, clubs and bars from all around the world. We would like to welcome our amazing sponsors who are on board uh, supporting the podcast. We have the Gallant Pioneer in Blackpool, the Gart Craig Pub, VIP Ices, Cube Glass, Country Carpets, Avia Signs, Croft Construction, Impact Signs, Ernock Builders and EK Blinds and Shutters. Please check out their social media pages and websites for more information. Remember, if you're on YouTube, give us a like and subscribe to our show. Or if you're on any of our social media platforms, remember to like, comment and share, share, share. Get your questions in early tonight. We're joined by two real Rangers legends. Please welcome along the awaited 1972 Cup winners, Cup goal scorers, Mr. Willie Johnston and Mr. Colin Steen. <laughs> How are you, gentlemen? Very well, well thank you. Great. Welcome to the show, guys. Great to see you. Thank you. As usual, we do have a quiz we're going to have in place for this absolutely lovely book here, Tortured, the Sam English Story. So this is our gift, our prize tonight on the show, if you get your questions in. And Stan here will give you the yes, questions. Yes, I've got the two questions. This is a great book. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Holmes uh, came in to the pub and I'd done a wee book launch for it, and it, it sold well, and it's a right good story. You'll, you'll know the member him, but you uh-huh. remember all of them at, at yeah. Rangers, and a bit of a tragic story, to be fair. With him. But it's, a, it's a great read, and it? The two questions tonight, it's one for Colin and, and one for Wally. And the first one is, could you tell me the three players that have scored hat-tricks in their debut? Who were they? And that was for Colin. And the other one for Bud is, what ground was his first European game for Glasgow Rangers. So that's the two. I'll repeat them again. Who's the three players, first three players to score hat-tricks in their debuts for Glasgow Rangers? And what ground was the first Euro game for Wally Johnston? Excellent. Okay, Wally, first question for you tonight. No, before I ask you this, I know you hate me asking because any time we do a QA, it's the first question I ask you, but it's a good story. Which, yeah, you were a young boy, you came to Rangers. How did your first day at training go? Uh, my first day at, at training at Rangers was uh, my train was late coming from Fife, and uh, I got instead of getting there at half past nine. I got there at uh, half past ten, and Joe Craven, who was the assistant trainer at the time, took me across to the Albion and uh, left me. And the first player I met was Bobby Shearer, who came up to me and says, look, son, come and join us uh, for training. So I was joined Bobby Shearer, Eric Caldwell, Billy Ritchie, Doogie Bailey. I can't remember the rest, but uh, they were taking goal kicks. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined in, and all I was doing was taking goal kicks. And I'm saying to myself, there must be more to training than just <laughs> taking goal kicks. <laughs> and it was just then, after about 10, 15 minutes, uh, Jimmy Baxter appeared. And he says to me, uh, uh, are you the wee boy for Carndon, Bo Hill, Fife? I went, yeah, Jimmy, I, uh, Billy, Billy Johnson. He says, well, son, you better come and join us. He says, because you'll learn fuck all here. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Probably. Oh, that's See, great. that was not too bad asking that one again, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> right, Colin, coming to you. Right, so... Um, a record signing from Hibs to Rangers, £100,000. Yeah. What a start. Um, and in your first three games, how did it go? Absolutely brilliant. That gives uh, one of the questions away. Who scored a hat trick? <laughs> <for>, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's one of the players, aye. Right? I... <laughs> uh, scored my hat trick, uh, Arbroath. I remember it was a good day, Arbroath. It was only 40 mile an hour wind, so it's quite good. Uh, never kicked a ball in the first half. Ollie Johnson scored two. Uh, again, in the first half, <laughs> and the second half, I managed to score a hat trick in, in five minutes, which was unbelievable. And I got the Rangers supporters 
you know, on my side and chant my name. It was just, if you ever been up, it's, just, it's unbelievable. Second game I played against the, my former team, Hibs, and uh, in the tunnel, and the way I was getting, getting pelters for all the, <laughs> uh, my ex teammates and that. And uh, my best man at my wedding was in goals for Hibs, Thompson Allen. So, you know, shaking hands and that. And after the game, uh, I scored an archery, which was unbelievable. The crowd was, I don't know what the crowd was, there was a lot of people there that day. And uh, Thompson and I had a night out after it, and I can assure you, he didn't say much to me. It was a wee bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wee bit. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> my third game was uh, Dundalk. They, they already played against Dundalk for a uh, signed Ranger, so I was playing the second game. And I scored an R2 goal, so it's was well, great. And I actually hit the post and it ran along the line, hit the R post, so I could have scored three hard tricks, but eight goals in uh, three games is uh, probably start. still goes down as the best start for any Rangers. Player ever and they scored eight goals in the first three games. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the game against Dundalk over in Ireland, uh, myself and a few other boys had a wee bet on them scoring another hat trick and they didn't score another hat trick. That's the way you the, the guys were upset. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was in Europe, the, the Dundalk game, wasn't it? That was uh, fair Cup, I think. Cup, aye. Yeah. Well, that's an ass story eh? later on. The, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, you get you get after a wee bit of a bad start after that. You played Clyde, wasn't it? Was it was it Clyde and you had a week and a set two with the boy? Uh he, the late goals uh, to start with. I mean, where do you go uh, after that? Do you go downhill or, or whatever? We played against Clyde and uh, well actually I scored a hat trick that day as well. Oh did you? Uh, before I got sent off. <laughs> um, we, we all talk about Wally Johnson getting sent off and booked in that. I wasn't much better at, at, at that time. Uh, and that caused me to, you know, miss the, the, the cup final at Hamden against Celtic. Oh. Getting sent off. No, you wouldn't have liked that, eh? Oh, no. Well, I think the, the, the man in charge of the SFA then was a guy called Kelly. And I don't think it was Rangers oriented, so. <laughs> no, well, no very <laughs> much. Do you know, I was just about to say that. <laughs> The, the guy Eddie Mohern who I got involved with, I think he emigrated to Africa after that. Oh, did he? Aye. Uh, so was he a half decent player? Well, I think he? the Rangers supporter was upset. <laughs> 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 no, he wasn't a half decent player. No. No. Well, uh, uh, you played in your first cup final. So was it seventeen? You were seventeen. The first cup final. First cup final. Yes. And then, League cup. Uh, and you were a wee bit nervous. What what happened there? Uh, a wee bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a bag of nerves. I was only 17, 17 and a half. It was the first final I played in. And I uh, was downstairs at Hamden having a quiet cigarette. And Mr. Baxter appeared <laughs> and says, uh, What's wrong with you? I says, Jimmy, I'm a bag of nerves. I can't go out there, honestly. He says, Look, son, just treat it like a practice game at the Albion, like Tuesday and Thursday. Forget about the crowd. And uh, if the score is nothing each with a couple of minutes to go, you go up and get the cup and I'll... Oh, I told this wrong. <laughs> you go up and get the cup and I'll take the penalty kick. That was, <laughs> I did tell her that. By you, no, I know. But uh, it was like that, wasn't it, Jim Baxter? Oh, I was so confident. It was, honestly, it was unbelievably confident in his ability. I think I read that it wasn't that long ago there that I think he only lost once or something against Celtic and he's or, that, or the uh, games uh, against him. Uh, and we had that we get I've talked to you about it on Saturday actually. We he's uh he's Scotland shirt there seemed to be well, three of them now, didn't they? <laughs> that's right. I, I think there's more than three. I, I, I don't know that's I think um he made a comment to to Bud the uh, before he died, obviously, he says, how many effing shirts did I wear at Wembley? He says. <laughs> but did and you know... That, and now they're all coming out. <laughs> <laughs> did you know, say, me on Saturday, that he actually didn't like the crew neck in 67 and he kept pulling and they ripped it? That's right, eh? I thought he's... The one he wore at Wembley, it was ripped at the top of the neck. And uh, the one that was going on sale... Wasn't he? 
wasn't ripped, but as Colin said, he, he, he told me once, uh, how many jerseys did I wear at Wembley? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hope, I hope he. I hope he sells it for no, a lot of I money. Because no. the, the, I think the yeah. first one was with Alan. It would come to Alan Ball, but that's right. he certainly never changed with Alan Ball before he, he went off the park. Because Alan Ball was nowhere near. It was at the fifty thousand Scotland supporters. Eh? So I don't park. know when if that was involved after the, well, obviously after the game. If that was the, the case, eh? Aye. Oh, well, I just hope they get it sorted because it's not very good paying all oh, that no. kind of money and and you, you could have a chance you get. Or did you see the story, Lynn? No, I never seen it. Aye, uh, that he's top went up for auction at McLe- is it McClears? Yeah, and uh, McClears. I think they were looking for bids over thirty thousand. Well, it was it was mere, it was mere nuts, I, I think it was starting off at that, Steenie yeah, thirty, yeah. and then right. it was like he's top for sixty-seven, and then another guy came in and says, "I've got his top." So they had to pull his, his uh, jersey. Right. Uh, so there's a bit of a dispute on it. You know, I think you were right enough. I think you're saying, I think they said one was Alan, Alan Ball had gave a family, right. didn't they? Alan Ball gave it to Alan Hudson, apparently. And this guy got it for Alan Hudson, who played with you know, Chelsea. Chelsea. Stoke, and, uh, and then the other one was was, uh, was both at an auction. I think uh, you were at the auction. Well, I there, came right? across the two of them in my career and uh, two fantastic footballers, but. Uh, I would say they were maybe a wee bit dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Jimmy Baxter and Billy Brenner called the uh, Alan Ball Jimmy Clutherow during that game in '67. So. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't think they were too friendly. <laughs> Brilliant. Colin, Rangers lift the European Cup Winners' Cup in Barcelona. 1972. Oh my, oh my God! I think I'm going to break into song here. By the way. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, right, you get interviewed, and sorry, I you get interviewed by Archie McPherson on the bus after the game. Arthur Monford. All right, tell us about it. Well, uh, we stopped to, to join Greg uh, in the seat in front of us. He's on about how he done, how was his fitness and that, and John was saying to him, and I was sitting, and uh, I think it was Wally Matthews, and I was sitting next to me. So he turned around and he says, uh, Well, Colin, he says, which one of your goals is a better goal? I says, only scored one, Arthur. I've been at a game watching the game, surely. Aye, did surely. you not see him years after that? Oh, uh, the, the story goes on, hey, we got made in the, the Hall of Fame, uh, Wally and I, uh, in behalf of the Rangers, which I think was wrong. I think it should have been the whole team that, that got into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And uh, guess who was uh, MC? Arthur Monfort. <laughs> so he introduces myself and Willie and we're walking past them and he said, don't you can mention it to me. <laughs> so but I did, he did, I mention, did mention it. it. Oh, did, did you? Did ah, yeah, 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 you might do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. You, you go, Willie, you go to uh, play at Arsenal's ground and uh, you've got a chance meeting me with, with a big star. What happened there? <sighs> well, that's the answer to the oh. question. Hey, <laughs> 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 clues. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell it and see. Oh, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> aye. Right. Oh, I've missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, 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 uh, <laughs> Tell the truth, the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Yeah. My, my, my first game in Europe was uh, against Red Star Belgrade. Right. But it was played at Highbury uh, because it was a playoff game. At, at that time, there was uh, a wee goal, didn't count. So they tossed the coin. Rangers won uh, the toss and they had to travel so far out to Glasgow and to 500 miles or something and play the game. So they, they picked Highbury and uh, because they had association with Arsenal. And I'm on the bus going to the game and Jim Baxter comes and sits next to me and he says to me, uh, he's starting to tell me about the right back I'm playing against. He says, this boy's a good player, he's good on the outside, he's not bad 
He's not very good on the inside, but he's good on the outside. But once you go by him, just cross the ball, and that's you done your job for the night. Don't come back and beat him again or anything fancy. And what are you doing with your comps? I says, eh, comps? I says, no, I don't know anybody here. He says, well, give them to me. So we're in the dressing room. We get our complimentaries. They're giving their complimentaries out, and I'm following Baxter out to the front door at Highbury, the old Highbury. And uh, he's waving this man across. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm going, fucking okay, hell. <laughs> Sean Connery, <laughs> James Bond, <laughs> just me, Doctor No. Oh, I'm going, oh. Anyway, they start talking about golf, playing golf. They've got to go, they're going to go and have a game each. And I'm going, I'm nudging and I'm saying, introduce me. And I nudge again, introduce me. And I'm going, I says, Jimmy, go on here and introduce me. And he just turned around and he says, Bully, would you piss off? <laughs> <laughs> I gave Sean Connery my complimentaries and I never got to meet him. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get to meet him. Oh, God. I never met him, <laughs> <laughs> Stevie uh, mate, playing golf. <laughs> well, in 1969, I played a, a competition at Dunit Troon with Jim Baxter, the two Jim Baxter was back then. And it was a Sean Connery tournament, and of course, Simon Baxter was, you know, stuck his seed. So I had met uh, Sean Connery. Oh, have you? <laughs> there you go. You got my comps. And you got your comps. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, um, was training with Jock Wallace as hard as what they say? We've had a couple of legends on, haven't we? Aye. Talking about it, but let's hear. Oh, it certainly was. I, I think when they introduced um, uh, Gullin. Golden Sands, they us, we're all going, oh, it's the way. But even, even uh, you know, the, the pre-season was hard, hard with them. But if you don't do your pre-season a, a professional footballer, you, you'll not be fit. If you do that, you'll be fit for the rest of the season. And then they introduced us then to Gullin. And we went, oh, well, well there were a few comments. About it. So we went down, done it. It was very, very, very hard. Unbelievable. Uh, went up hills and dune hills and sand and uh, but here was the leader uh, going uphill which is hard to uh, go into deep sand and no footprints there i went up about fifth or sixth and then there's footprints there which are it's a lot easier eh? and i can tell you uh, it's easier going down the hill and working up the hill it was it was murder but i must admit the uh, fitness rangers at that time was absolutely fantastic uh, to take you back to the 72 bairn Munich murdered us for 60 minutes. Uh, and after that, we ran over the top of the, probably the top, top team in the world then. And that was due to Joe Wallace getting us fit. And that, uh, obviously, we, we drew over there and then then beat him there. But it was hard. But if he if you'd done the job, big joke, if you give him 100%, big joke was pleased. But if he yeah. didn't, eh? I well, problems. I, I, I done a gig with Vijay a couple of months ago That's there, right. and, and he was talking about it when he was a young boy. He, he got made to dent. It was a boy, uh, McFarlane, a young boy, McFarlane that came to Rangers. I don't know if he, he was maybe after you. Was after I can't remember. And uh, what you were saying, getting up there, oh, hills and, and, and that. The, and he, he said he was he was using the footsteps to go up. He says. <laughs> Big joke was in the middle of the, they, they got oh, the, yeah. the sand right with a big stick. <laughs> he said, and the young boy thing. ran up and he, he tripped and he fell. And Joke went to hit him in the arse with it and he, and he missed him and hit him in the heat. <laughs> <laughs> he really knocked him out. And he said, I thought they were going to get him to see, you know what I mean, you all right? He said, he grabbed him and flung him in the water, he flung him <laughs> in the sea. <laughs> so, Dan, I think we've got a couple of questions in or a couple of all right. people. Let me see, where have we got? Have we got any answers to that? Was you, uh, no. Walter Talis, what was the best goal Colin remembers scoring? Well, I think obviously uh, Barcelona. That's uh, your best. 72, probably followed by Easter Road in 75 when it stopped Celtic, beating, uh, getting 10 in a row. So. Aye, that was when you came back, wasn't it, after you right. sent to Coventry? That's right, we sent to Coventry for two and a half years. <laughs> Yeah, uh, see one there. Ask Colin about his <clears throat> his surprise fiftieth birthday at the Lithgow Bowling Club. Who hit him, Duff? 
Well, that's 25 years ago. 50th birthday. <laughs> I certainly was a member of the Lithgow Bowling Club, but I can't even mind my 50th birthday. To tell you. We've got a wee shout out here as well. Johnny, Johnny Parton. Stan, can we get a shout out to our mutual friends, Wayne and Cyan, who are getting married in July from Johnny and Louise in Stoke on Trent? All right. Yeah, we're nice going to shout out. There you go. I know, well, Good luck. Is it the 12th? <laughs> no, I tell them we couldn't have it in the 12th. We were busy that was For some reason, we are busy that weekend, but uh, he, he's, got his, he's got his wedding in Gibraltar. Big way, and he comes for the, the oh, jump, aye. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, he couldn't have picked a dearer place for anybody to travel out to go to a wedding. And me and Trish go out on uh, Saturday, and he gets married on the Monday. We fly home on the Wednesday to Manchester, and it's the goalie's boy, Danny, gets uh, married on the Wednesday. Oh, really? Uh, All right, uh. And then Belfast, obviously. But mm-hmm. and I'm just going out there for a wee trip. <laughs> It's all go then for you, isn't it? <laughs> He's busy, I'm busy July. <laughs> but, uh, no, I've got, I've, I've gone to say, Lindsay, we've got one coming up here uh, the weekend, Steenie. We're doing a, a sponsored walk for Ibrox uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, all our pubs. We've got four different pubs involved. Is that like Andy's daughter? Andy's Aye. daughter, Aye. Emmy, yeah. So we've got about 35 for the Stonefield Tavern. We've got uh, Lounge 72, we about the same doing it. And um, we've got uh, the, the Bristol, Bristol Bar <clears throat> and the Gart Craig, Big big Tams pub, the Gart Craig pub. But the way it's going to work out, because the Bristol Bars is close to Ibrox, they're going to leave Ibrox and walk to, uh, uh, leave the Bristol, walk to Ibrox and come in back. It's a fair walk, isn't it? Aye, uh, yours is about 11 the mile. <laughs> I Google mapped it. <laughs> Aye, but we're, we're having a couple of stops. The boys want us to stop in the quayside just at uh, Paisley Road best we're going to stop at the Black Bowl and a couple of wee pubs right, right. just to keep us going uh, Big Bob Malcolm and Charlie Miller they, they volunteered to date ways but Scott they're going to they're going to, they're, they're going to meet us at Cameras Lang now alright they're the two youngest they're going to okay. <laughs> Big Marvin's doing it but they're going to meet us at Cameras Lang they're the last bank of the glory that's like joking the race the last lap aye <laughs> I'll turn over to two miles aye well, we'll work soon aye well, he so says uh, about half an hour away. Where is Ennis involved in? Well, he's going to take part in the full thing and he's got his van there, so he's going to fill up for a lot and a few beers if anybody's wanting a beer yeah, on there. Uh, no, it'll be good. be good. And then you've got the fabulous Lindsay. And Lindsay's oh, singing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Lindsay's, uh, Lindsay's singing. <laughs> but we've done well. We've got some good auction prizes up and all that because we're hoping to yeah. raise a lot. 24 pubs are hoping to raise a lot of money. Uh-huh. And one of our sponsors, uh, V Sammy, as you know, V Sammy, oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other boy, Ian Martin, the two of them, two of them gave us five grand each, oh, which, yeah. which oh, yeah. for a, a wee night is fantastic. I can't so, how, how's vo- Andy? Does the sea involved? No, Andy? no, oh. I've just did it for, for uh-huh. his daughter, right, you know. Right, okay, man. That'll be, that'll be a good it's one. Nice to give back, isn't it? Oh, tremendous. Uh. Aye, and as I say, Lindsay's singing after it, so. I'll be knackered. Good... I'm doing the walk and then having to sing. I'll get right, a good boy. wee. Good is that in the stone field? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steenie's singing, yeah? Aye. <laughs> 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 <Good. laughs> <laughs> it, up in the, somebody's actually put on there, I hope that's no beer. Steenie's drinking. <laughs> no, <it's Budweiser>. <laughs> <laughs> look at the two of them, look. Give yourselves a cheers quick, coming oh, on to the podcast. Right. <laughs> it's called Bud. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gary Jai Hood there, Steenie says, question for Kong. Gary Hood. Oh, I he said, who's the best Ranger supporting bowler? Hood or Duff? I would say Hood. All right, I uh, guess he's rolling. <laughs> oh, he's bigger than the... By the way, we've gave a, a couple of good clues, by the way, for his book, and there's need to come up I know, I, I think we need to read the questions out again, Stan. Right, I'll do that. Because it takes a wee while sometimes for people to come on when uh, they see we went live. It takes a wee uh, while yeah. for them to... So we've got three players have scored hat-tricks in their debut. For Glasgow Rangers, who were they? And what ground was the first European game debut for Wally Johnston? And he gave you a good clue with that last question I asked him. <laughs> he didn't ask Sean Connery about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just remember the wee break, I'll bring some things that we've got coming up. There's a, there's a Tam Jardin Memorial uh, Rangers quiz on the 18th of March. And the Orange Falls and Lark call, it's £10 entry. If anybody that's in Muir Street, if anybody fancies it, 
uh, just contact myself or whatever. And then we've got Blackpool. Yeah, it's the 25th of March, I 25th think. of March, we've got Graham Roberts, Gordon Jury, and the referee, Bobby Tate, which Bobby's brilliant, it'll be in for a good night there. And gallant Pioneers. And the Gallant Pioneers, mm-hmm. John Parson. So I think he's been advertising it. So if anybody fancies, I think it's a meal in the Gallant Pioneer. I think it's the first time he's tried to have an actual... We've all done the, the Gallant Pioneer, but he's actually having a sit down meal and... The, I think the, it'll work. The, the, I think it'll be good. I think aye. it'll work out well. I well, do. It's a big area as well. Isn't aye, it? aye, it's good. We've been a good time doing there, have we not? Oh yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, aye, definitely. Uh, no, that's. Are you getting anything else coming up? No. No, okay. no, that's. You know me. I'm taking a wee step back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So we'll, we'll head into Rangers and you know. uh Colin, what, what's your thoughts? And the, the current squad at the moment. Well, I think maybe like uh, in '72, they're um, they're a bit inconsistent. Uh, since Bill come, the, well, they've been beat. Uh, I think the, the the Celtic game, especially, they didn't play really well in the, the first half, but they got in front in the second half. Yeah, I think they should have maybe attacked them more in the second half. Maybe got a third goal. But anyway. That's the only blemish in his, uh, his uh, managership uh, so far. I know they scraped over in two or three games, but uh, I was impressed when uh, they went to Tynecastle. That's the best I've seen Rangers playing for a long time, pressing and and, and winning balls and, and scoring goals. And I can't imagine if a yard this way, they could have scored six or seven that night. Uh, Aye, aye. Mm-hmm. I was up at the game, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, uh, only, it's only, you know, one yard or something, and three occasions they could have, you know, three goals. So, played really well. I think, um, I think Robbie Nielsen was a bit naive. I think he's just maybe a good manager. Well, I don't know. But he set up an attacking team to play against Rangers. And they let Snodgrass in midfield play himself. He can't run good in the ball, just, but he can't run. And he was out, out run, he was out of hand. I thought they set up terrible against the uh, Rangers. I'm no doubt right. Rangers played really well against them. No, no, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then the series about the game on Saturday, and yeah. I, I was I, I seen the interviews in the, the Thornton Suite, and any of the players that came in or the interview, they were saying four and five, nothing. And, oh, that's and right, it, when, yeah. when they came in taking the yeah. bets, there were some of them betting minus oh, two and minus three. Yeah. And uh, it didn't work out that way on oh, Saturday. I, I think these days are, are gone, you know, four or five now, and especially when you're getting 11 men behind the ball. But, I mean, that's uh, been Rangers' maybe problem is, you know, against the ball, uh, everybody behind the ball at Ibrox. That's what they do. But they've got to find a way, you know, you're breaking them down, eh? Aye. What did you think yourself, Wally? Oh, what you... The other teams, you got to come out and play against Rangers. Uh, they'll know I but like no, but at heart at Tynecastle, you wouldn't expect a really, really hard game. But give give the manager his due at Tynecastle, he went and had a go. So if everybody has a go at Rangers, you think Rangers are one, two or three, nothing every week. No, Rangers but... have got to play against eleven, ten defenders every week at home. But the hearts come and had a go. Ah, you're right. Ah, you're right, Willie. Well, they, they I get set, it. They set mm-hmm. up to have a, a go, Willie, but they didn't have a go. They mean, they no, were, I, they, I, they, I, they, I can see what you're trying to say. I actually I, don't I, think they had a shot. Oh, they yeah. hearts. I can't have a, uh, maybe I one. Mackay had, had, had a wee that, chance. That, I, think, that, I think that was a But they set up to do that. That's your point. Oh, the thing was on about Shankman scoring so many goals. And I think they happened last, the last time the uh, Rangers visited um, Tynecastle. It was about Shankman and that, and the, by, the boy goal that scored uh, two, and the, Rangers won four now, eh? The, the rate Shankman? Well, I, I think he's a good player um, at Hearts standard. Aye, maybe. I, I don't, but do you think he would enhance the Rangers team then? I don't think so, no. He's uh, no, uh, no better player than Morelos. No. Yeah, but I might agree. Bit, with you. There again, you've got to get Morelos fit and ready to go, and every week he's, he's beginning to get fitter, isn't he? I know. Well, he's got a different point of view for Morelos, but you've also got Golak who scored the top scorer in Scotland until he got injured. Aye, 
Aye. Mm-hmm. They're, they're two different players, aren't they? You know, they were, they were talking about playing them both together, but hmm, I don't he's never done it yet. But I don't think that's in Bill's makeup to play two uh, strikers. A, a, a big difference I've I've noticed is, is, since uh, Bills came. Kent seems to be playing a lot better. Yeah, it's, well, it's more consistent. Aye, definitely. And he's gave him a. I think uh, reading in the papers and all what they were saying there when he was when he was under uh, Van Bronckhorst, he had him uh, out and wide and no moving for his wide position. But I think now Bill says to him, "Look, do your own thing. Come inside oh. and." You know what I mean? I, th- I think he can come inside with, with Barris going up the you know the wing as well. Thing. He can go and he's certainly improved the last two three. I think his confidence is a little better. And, uh, one of the best crossers I've seen mm-hmm. in Scottish football, maybe European football. Ever. Well, I aye. think he lost his confidence a bit, but he's coming back now. Aye, he did on Saturday. I know. I thought uh, that the, the defence was panicking because of our goalkeeper. Uh, well, the, like the stinker again. Well, that's another thing, uh, rotating goalkeepers. I don't know if that's the right thing or no. That's no. up to the manager, isn't it? it? It we lost that goal there and he came out and he flapped, but no, even just that. They had a chance about five minutes after it, and it was the same cross into the box. And he came out and done the same thing, and just luckily we got away with it. We could have been two each there, and we didn't deserve to be two each because we'd done enough to win the game. Oh, definitely. Definitely. What, what do you think? Uh, what do you think with, with Van Bronckhorst happened? Do you think just the players down tools? Well, it certainly looked like that. I don't know. No been inside the dressing room and hear things going on, but certainly didn't look as if they were given a hundred percent to the Rangers. And I think that's unforgivable. If you put a Rangers shirt on, you don't give a hundred percent. Well, Aye, whether you like the should manager uh, or not, of course. Aye. What do you think, you to prove yourself, you? Well, you kind of, my question was there to ask this, so <laughs> listen, it's kind of being spoke about now. Um, I, I, I agree, I, I think that you're just spot on with everything. Obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't at the game or anything like that, but I watched it, um, and I thought that was the best game that we've played this season against oh, Hearts. Definitely. I think to, to ask players, you know, we'll be motivated for the Celtic game. It should be motivated for every game. Never Aye. Celtic. But Aye. I think that it was quicker football we were playing as well. I think passing was much better. I think we did the more pressing. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, quicker. Quicker, so we, quicker we, we, and the passing was better. Uh, it wasn't as sloppy because for a while I felt that the passing and losing losing balls constantly, uh, that was sloppy for a while. But we also changed the, a couple of players Aye. Uh, for the Ross County game. Uh, yeah, yeah, I well, he did. He did. And... See, see, I felt at the end up with Van Bronckhorst there, they, they were playing like, I mean, I was in, uh, was it Amsterdam, I was in Eindhoven, I was talking to their fans and they said that Van Bronckhorst used to be called the horseshoe when he was a manager uh, earlier because he played like that, they didn't, they didn't attack into the box and uh, he started doing that, Rangers started doing that. I think if you've got that much possession, uh, it's Holland play, the Holland national team, but you've got to have an end product. For me, didn't you? Ah, you've got to score goals, haven't you? Yeah, well, I mean, my dad saying that, my dad said, what he's trying to do is good, but the players he's got there can't... Uh, they weren't working for him. They, they, they can't do that, what he's wanting to be there. Not, they weren't good enough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex Kelly's asking, uh, Steenie, does, Mare- <laughs> does Morelis deserve a new contract? Well, if he's at his A best. player that is the worst disciplinary record than you two. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quite funny. I think uh, Bud's uh, worse than me. (laughs) Uh, But the thing is, Morelis, I think he's a great goal scorer. If you take the fire out his belly, he's he's not the same player, is he? No. You've got to be... um... (laughs) (laughs) If you score goals, you're sent it forward. Uh, I think it's worth a new contract. I, I might be wrong, but oh no, I agree with you. I I like him. Well, see, when you're talking about that, somebody's actually put up there as well that we're needing. Um, who was it? James Goodwin. We're needing a big centre forward like Mark Cately. Well, you obviously need a target man. The Rangers have never had a target man for long enough, maybe since Mark Cately left the club. Mm. Uh, Alan McCoy wasn't a, a target man, so I don't know. I I think it, it was a wee bit different when you Back had twin, twin strikers like 
They played a feature each other, didn't they, Hayley uh, and Croy Stakers? That's right, uh. Hayley would win, win, win a lot of uh, odds. Hayley and... was the head of the ball, yeah. Aye. Croy sniffed a boot. Same as Roberts in the Hearts many years ago. He was a wee guy, but uh, he played with Jimmy Bowen, Jimmy. Sandy Clark, you know, a big guy. Aye. When they were from him. Alex Kelly He's saying horrible. Dado Purcell. Aye, well, he was a, a hard player. What was the one with Wally Black there? For, I don't know if you bought one there. With Wally Black? Aye. Oh, I. Uh, right, Stan, on you go. What, what was it true uh, when you were 15 you went for trials with Man United at the same time as George Best and you came back, back because you were homesick? True. Aye? Aye? Yeah. What happened? Just... Was it I no saw, funny? I saw Bestie play and I went... No, <laughs> 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 oh, no, I was... I, I, they, yeah, they asked me to sign. Mike, oh, did they? Uh, yeah, oh, I could have signed, but uh, I was caught. I want, I want to come the first time I've been away in my life, Manchester Hotel for a week, and uh, my father loved it, but I didn't like it. And uh, I came home and I, I, I was going to sign with Rick Rover, I was going to sign with them, and uh, but Rangers came back in again and asked me, and I went to Rangers, joined the ground stuff. But I could have, the first time I met George Best when I was 15 and a half at Old Trafford. Was he a chai boy then? He wasn't he? No, was he not? <laughs> no. He no. was I. He was. But uh, he, after that. He, he was exceptional. Oh, I've never been a player, wasn't he? He was, even at, <clears throat> at that age, he was exceptional. Did the two years you got a chance to play against him at any time? Played against them, oh, aye. Seriously, played against them. Ireland, aye. Oh, really? Did Ireland did. Was he as good as they say? Oh, tremendous! I well, was one of the best players. I, I would rate one of the top five players in the world I've ever seen. And that's quite an accolade, isn't it? Aye, okay. And I think it's no, no, no any slur on Northern Ireland, but for the size of Northern Ireland and all that, I think if it had been more bigger. International oh, team. Well, I've never played in the World Cup. No, he never, never got a chance to. Yeah. And then he, he ended up, with, he went to Hibs, didn't he? That's right, yeah, he was, uh, uh, he was uh, I don't know if he was alone, no, I think he signed with, with Hibs, didn't he? Kenny Wall. Uh, Tom, Tom McNevin was Tom uh, I think I think he put about 5,000 onto the... Onto the oh, uh, yeah. on that one. Yeah, but, uh, well, he did the same with Fulham as well. He went to Fulham before he went to Hibs, didn't he? Or did he go to Fulham after him? I don't know. Rodney Marsh. Uh, I mean, we, we bowed with Murdo telling us that. Well, that was his agent. His manager. His manager, uh, it was his manager aye. And then, uh, he had a gig today in Shore Road in Northern Ireland. And uh, Bestie phoned him. And he says, See that gig on Saturday? I'm not going. And he says, You'll need to go. I said, it's you and Ian St. John. It's said, look, there's 800 going or 1,000 people. He says, I'm not going. How no, I don't want to go. And he just put the phone down. <laughs> and he went, remember going today? So Mo Johnson was with Celtic at the time. So he phoned Glasgow and he says, Mo, get on the next flight. You'll need to come out here. And he says, yeah, we've got a gig in Shore Road in Belfast. He's uh, spoiled. <laughs> and he says, uh, you're, you're speaking out here on Saturday night. And me and Mo says, I'm not going to Belfast. He says, ah, you'll need to come. He's coming. This is true, right? There used to be a, a hotel called the Park Avenue in East Belfast. Oh, I've been in there. I've been in the Park Avenue. So I'm in, I'm in Moe's sitting at the bar having a drink in the Park Avenue hotel before the gig. And Mo goes to the toilet and I come back and he says, you don't believe that there, Bill. I said, what? He says, I'm at the bar having a couple of beers. Uh, I'm at the bar. I said, I've left you. I've into the toilet. He said, and I've looked through. I said, and the guy next to me, he said, he's eating Paisley's double. He said, I'd have, I'd have thought it was Ian Paisley. He said, he's double. And Bill says, Ian Paisley comes in here for his wife for lunch quite a lot. So he went away into the bar. And who's sitting? Paisley. He says, there's a wee favour. He says, I've got a boy in me. He says, he plays for Glasgow Celtic. He says, they're the, the, the Catholic team in, in Glasgow. And he went, oh, I know who they are. He says, well, he plays for them. Any chance you can go and noise them up? And me Bill says, I sat back down at the bar with a uh, wee mo. He said the next thing the door burst home. I hear her a papist in this oh, bar. No. <laughs> Most slid under the table. I <laughs> 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 uh, I think uh, 
as you say there, any anything documentaries or anything I've seen it, George Best was, was outstanding. Eh? Oh, uh-huh. oh, well, have you seen his, his dad? His dad was a wee guy with glasses, he didn't look, you know, nothing like you know, George Best. I had uh, one night out with him in Manchester, we played at West Brom and uh, East of Hartford, Len Cantello. Brian Robson and we were in this nightclub in Manchester and George Best was standing round the corner of the bar and when they come out from behind to come and drink with the boys in front of the bar, he stood round the corner and the minute he did come out from behind or the side of the bar, whew, Women. <laughs> Women. Thank Christ, I thought you were going to say boys. <laughs> Women. No, he, he never got peace, he didn't he? Nah, I, I he, could imagine. Anywhere he went, he never got peace. Aye, aye. Especially for, for where he came from. I know, uh, he was one of the boys, you know, he was what he did was come out with the boys, have a drink, and enjoy yourself, and that, and that. You, 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 not, I never mentioned it there, but you played with Alan Ball and all, didn't you? Oh, Bolly, aye. He was a bit of a character, oh, wasn't he? Bolly was brilliant, honestly. He was the same. Bolly, Bolly couldn't do great much down there. No? No. What? Um, no, after the World Cup, no. The minute he went anywhere, his pal was, uh, well, he left, uh, was it Blackpool? Aye. And he went uh, Everton, yeah, left Everton, went to Arsenal, and then in London, oh, World Cup winner in London, he couldn't go, he couldn't, him and Bobby Moore, well, the minute he walked in, that was it. Brilliant. No, he was a great, he was a player, but when he was a great player. Oh, fantastic oh. footballer, Bolly. I played well on ball as well. What did you? At, at Coventry? No, at Wembley. What, what game is that? <laughs> and the manager of our team was Alf Ramsey. Was that a select then? Was that a... It was uh, It was uh, when um, Britain uh, and uh, joined the European European. What is it? Common market. Common market, and it was called the three versus the six. And Alf Ramsey was our manager. How many Scotsmen have been under Alf Ramsey as manager? Eh? Can I get any? No, a few. <laughs> <laughs> And a wee Wally Henderson was here to tell you that he done it, wouldn't he? Aye. <laughs> Obviously. That's <laughs> Kenny Bums. Aye, well. Right, I think we should give this book one last chance, right? Guys, we've got this book that we want to give away to somebody. somebody. So the questions, let me see. Stan, what were the questions? All right, when you go. Right, so for Steenie, name three players that scored hat tricks on their debut. So who were they? Who? What three players scored hat tricks on their debut? That's for Steenie. And <laughs> 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 the other question for Willie was, what was his the first ground in his first Euro game that he played in? Yep. So, so we'll get up five minutes. Five and- more minutes, guys, or we're bringing this book back in a couple of weeks. <laughs> And we'll make the questions a wee bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> we get any there, up there? Um, Alex Kelly is oh, asking, yeah. uh, he's asking, um, have you got any Jim Baxter or Jock Wallace stories? But we did have, well, we've had a couple, I, but I think, I don't know if he was meaning, like, I don't know, like fun, something funny. I, I, I can imagine Jock Wallace being the manager of the now, Alec, and, uh, before the game and that, you know, we put our jerseys and sweat pants and whatever, getting stripped and that, and saying to him, hey, boss, it's a wee bit cold today. You think we've got a set of gloves? <laughs> <laughs> well, after he lifted me off the floor, I think he says that was, I, I says, that I know, boss. <laughs> Aye, definitely. That's my, that's my pet hate, players playing with gloves and, Aye, and it's, short sleeves. It's changed days now, oh. isn't it, for, but see, even when you see on some of the games in the seventies and all that kind of stuff, and it shows you the grin with the oh. snow, and they've just got a guy just marking the lines out with the snow, and they're playing with an orange ball. They're ne- they never. How did you play football? Now you've got you got 
the last couple of weeks, you've had two managers, top managers at Celtic and Rangers coming out and complaining about pitches. But honestly, people, they, they say Hamden's like a... Cogmire. Cogmire. They, they, oh, that was a bowling green compared to what we played in. Honestly, <laughs> I think, I think that the... was perfect. Even when we played at Hamden, it was... Ah, oh, to blame the pitches <laughs> is shite. <laughs> I think uh, down in England, when, when I played, um, the baseball ground was the worst ground in England. And Derby had the best team in England then. Did they, so, do you think that's the way they've done it? Did they well, think I don't know. They, you know, they played in Europe and did well ever. And Brian Clough was uh, the manager there, wasn't he? Aye. I think we've got one with James McConnell there. Where's aye, I've seen one? that, aye. Uh, for Jersey? Big James for Jersey. There is there. Always great to see the show back. All right. Well, he's got his the 15th of July. Uh, oh, that's another thing I'm doing in July too. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a busy month. He's yeah, uh, he's 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 been there there before, ain't you? The, the Temple Bar shot now. Ah, so we see him now. Well, the big pub across. Aye, uh, we've got but, somebody that's tried. They've opened it now. They're, they're opening another one, uh, Britannia. I think it's called. Well, the same wee guy, like. Aye, aye. Somebody's tried to answer the question there. I think. Oh. I think somebody's put Colin Steen, Chris Boyd, uh -huh. and Jim Forrest. And then Belgrade. No, that's, that's no that's right. No right. No, he's, he's got two right. He's got two right. Chris Boy scored a hat trick against Peter Head. And his debut? Yeah. So that's two. two. So he's got two right. Huh? And then it's no Belgrade, in it not? <laughs> no. No. He tell, tell, tell you where it was. I saw he did. He said it earlier on in the show. It was against them. <laughs> Aye. Oh, yeah, well, that's, I that's, suppose. That's, 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 that's Belgrade, that's Belgrade huh? But no, no, it's not. He's right. wanted to know the ground. Uh -huh. Oh, the ground was it? Oh, right, right. Sorry, sorry. It's got the team right, but what was the ground? <laughs> Aye, well, he should get that. He should still get it, I suppose. So is this the third game? Why? Is this the third game? Third game, ah, right? playoff. So came our roof, <laughs> fashion Sakala and Defoe. No, <laughs> <We'll be laughs> before that. <laughs> Did they actually have a score? <laughs> I'll, I'll give them a clue. He was a right winger. There you go, you've got a clue there. Come on, guys. You are sitting with Google. <laughs> it's no you then, is it? No, no, no. no. Right, well, while we were talking about Hamden and pitches, right, so the cup final, what do you think, Stan? Willie Colin, what do you think? Oh, the obviously, cup final? It's, going to be, it's going to be tough again. But if we can reach the way we did against Hearts, we've got a good chance because Celtic are going to come out and play further. They're not going to put 11 men behind the, the, the ball. They're, they're going to have a go. And when they have a go at Rangers, Rangers can 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 open them up, especially at Hamden, the White Park. We've always quite uh, lucky at Hamden. We, 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 we seem to be able to perform. Well, I think we should uh, go for a juggler against them. No no hang back. Then they sit back and wait to, to, have to see what happens. If they score a goal, well... Aye, you're you're go go. Going for them. If you're a goal doing me attack, that's fine. Aye. Let's, let's go for someone off. You're going for a cup final, aren't you? Aye. So you go to win the game. This will be yeah, a year playing of course. And I, I think it sets the tone for us if we can win that final, you know, at the end of the season. And uh, real, uh, realistically, the legs away. You're hoping it's no, but you've got, you, you've got to match the Celtic players for effort, pace, everything. You match them, you get a wee break. Well, I, I think we're maybe, uh, I think we're maybe a wee bit fitter and. Celtic because he ah, was running his team after six, ah, 60 have. minutes, but you, ah. if you've got to contain them for well, 60 minutes and see what happens after that. That's happened a few times. We've played them recently and they've went at us and we've not been able to hold them and we've lost a couple of goals well, well, and then we've come back into it again ah. because you said they're running out of steam because Celtic seem to get the traps quick, didn't they? Yeah. And, and if you can stop that, if it's you stop that, that's yeah, fine. If, 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 if you go back and, and, and sit back in that and you're two, two or three nothing. Celt at the end didn't have to run about. He just sat back and yeah, you got you got to score two three goals and that's and it's always goals. a good atmosphere at Hamden, isn't it? Oh, unbelievable! Eh? That was actually better no, it when, was... when it was a stoning night enough, wasn't it? I mean, 
Used to score in the Rangers then, and you couldn't see for dust. Well, well I can remember <laughs> coming at home, didn't it? It was, uh, I don't know, 50,000, 60,000 at one side. Yeah, red, white, and blue, and then green, white, and gold at air. But now, you know, when you play at Ibrox or, or uh, Parkhead. Uh, or maybe. Uh, so it's a corner. A wee, a wee corner, uh, it's Aye. different. The semi final. That, that's up to the, 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 the two boards to Aye, get to together. Back, and get it back as a, you know, a, an old firm game. I don't think they'll ever bring that back now. For policing and all that, re the reasons yeah. and that as well, I don't think they'll ever bring no, that I, back. I mean, going to, to uh, Parkhead years and years back, and, and Rangers used to get a third of the, the jungle, and then they'd uh -huh. get half of the main stand, uh -huh. and then the, 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 the Rangers end. Aye. And then gradually it just started getting, it was the one end. I oh, know, well. just. I just remember when I had my first season ticket, I was sitting in the West Enclosure and they used to, I was right at the corner flag and they used to have the fully the Broomlin. So they did, I used to love but hate the old firm games oh, back oh, then. Different, yeah. Aye. It's different now. It was, you're talking about the jungle, I can mind, you know, playing in the middle, obviously, and they got a throw in and I went uh, to take the throw in. And I thought, well, I was got my, my parentage question in the winter. I said, well, I'm not taking another good job. I'm staying in the middle with the road. <laughs> what, one, what one is, was it? Tell the story with me, with me Doddy, we, we take, the, take the corner. Was it you? We tell the boys that one, tell them. I've been taking a corner. Kid. I would be at me Doddy. I wasn't at Parkhead or anything. I know, I know. He, he, he wouldn't have done one at Parkhead, Doddy. <laughs> Never taken a corner kick in his life. He played 500 and odd games. The game was Bayern Munich in right. the semi final at Ibrox. And we were playing for about 80 minutes, 85 minutes. And I got a corner and I'm shouting at me, Doddy, Doddy, come out and take the corner. So I've got him out. I say, Take the corner. I can't take corners. <laughs> I says, Doddy, take the <laughs> corner. He says, But I can't take corners. I says, Doddy, look, I'm knackered, honestly, I'm fucked. I just want to go in the middle and get a rest. You take the corner. He says, no, I can't take corners because everybody looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> there was 80,000 people in the ground. This is the 85th minute and everybody fucking looks at you. <laughs> so he'd been running about the full game, but he didn't want to take a corner. He never took a corner in his career. No, is that right? No, and he played outside. Like. If, if before the game, we go round the pitch. You know the two goals uh, when they're practicing that. They always about twenty yards in for the corner flag. I always say to Doddy, I said you could manage that, couldn't you? Twenty years, eh? That's <laughs> <laughs> a mate for a professional football player. It's it's a real real statement, that, that, isn't it? Oh. Everybody's got their own wee things though that they like and don't like to do though oh. in any profession, isn't there? Well, that's what it's to does. be well, fair. If you're on, if you're on a football team and there are eighty thousand people there, and it's eighty fifth minute. And you're still on the park, and you're saying everybody. He's looking at me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> looking at me. He obviously feels under pressure. Felt under pressure, didn't he? When he <laughs> like on the in the spot. Do you know what I mean? Put on the spot. There's somebody had a go. Colin Steen, Davy Wilson, and <laughs> Chris Boyd. Oh. And then somebody said Coiste, which I, that's no, not right. No, 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 like no I'm talking for the the, the hat tricks. I saw him. Ah, he was a winger. He was a right, was a right course, winger, wasn't it? Aye. Was no winger. There's no Davy Wilson either. Yeah. It's that era. Oh, it's that era. Oh. Mm. Davy Wilson scored six. Oh, that's Davy Wilson, one of, the, one of the characters, eh? Somebody saying Calamero, Tommy McLean. Yeah. Henderson. Oh. No. <laughs> My shoes are lit. Uh, getting close. Is it the guy that Henderson took your feet? It's, it's up to them, I guess. Yeah, you, you're quiet. Is oh, it? We've only got a couple of more minutes. Two minutes to go. <laughs> you come from Falkirk. Oh, I know. It was the same. The one that. Well, it's well, annoying Henderson. you now, oh, Stan, oh, isn't it? <laughs> He was getting a game in the Scotland team. That's right, same one. And Wally was, and Wally was getting a game for Rangers. I can't get anywhere further away than that. I heard somebody go to Alex Scott. That's it, uh, Alex Scott. Who's that? Go to Alex, Alex Kelly. Kelly. Oh, Kelly. You must have been on uh, Google, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do, Stan? Are we getting it away? 
<laughs> I will get to Alec, yeah. And there's Nigel saying could the could temple. Some, could I say something with Alec Kelly? You've got your right position now, indoor Alec, playing lead. <laughs> All right. What was up, the Bulls? <laughs> and then you've got the uh, Nigel saying the Temple Bar in Jersey. It's just the same bar, but it's moved, moved to a different. This Temple has just moved, but the same name. Aye. So they're keeping it the same name. I remember being in the Temple Bar years ago. Ah, uh, correct me, Pub. You're I always remember. welcome out there in Jersey. I was there as well, wasn't well, I? I was we. <laughs> kind of <mean. laughs> that was the time when we made me play the golf. Maybe. <laughs> He played the golf for me, Derek Ferguson, a wee oh. bit too many shandies on him. And he's coming down one fairway. There, a seven iron and a putter, and we're going up the other. And every time he would do the fairway, and he sees him, he started singing, you've got Wally, Wally, Wally Johnston on, <laughs> and then he's going to no, 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 again. Every time he went down, didn't he? Oh, brilliant. So, but, uh, so are we winding up then? Aye, that's fine. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks again, eh? Aye. Right, folks. Remember, get involved by subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking our Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages. Follow We Will Legends podcast. A huge, huge thank you to our guests, Colin and Willie. Thanks for coming on. It's been a pleasure speaking with you both. Thank you. And thanks thank for entertaining our viewers tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Also, thanks to Ricky behind the scene for providing the refresh, providing the refreshments here um, for the lads as well. Um, and Stan and I look forward to seeing you all tune in with more amazing surprise guests who will be joining us on the show. Details in the link will be posted in due course. And if right. you see us walking in Vernacker, don't be fear to stop gaze a wee beer on the way back to Blantyre. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> right, night, night, folks. Good night. God bless. Good night. Good night.